Welcome back to another video. So if you've been following along, I've been doing various videos on my 120,000 miles I've put on this 2010 Lexus RX 350. Today's video, we're gonna do the front and back brake pads and rotors. Believe it or not, these are the original brakes, 120,000 miles on them, which is amazing. First, let's go to the parts for this. Your rear pads, just take note of the part numbers. I'll put all these in the description if you wanna order some, but at the rear pads, I've got a shim kit which includes all the shims, the clips, and the grease, which is great. Um, same thing here, although these have an anti-squeal backing, it's not just straight stainless steel, it's actually got some type of an anti-squeal, but it still comes with the grease in here, and uh, I'll show you where, the, where we still need to use the grease on, on the moving parts on these clips. And then the front pads, which are, <coughs> which has some clips here that hold them on, but way beefier than the back pads. Then I've got my rotors, uh, rear rotors. There's the part for the rear rotor. Front rotors are easily twice as heavy as the rear. And there's a part number for the front rotors there. So all in all, that's pretty much all the parts. Okay, I kept everything off here because I'm still not done. I've still got spark plugs to do, but uh, You've got your brake reservoir here and you're gonna to wanna to unhook this. Okay, for this cap, I don't wanna leave this exposed because I don't want anything to possibly get into the brake system. So I'm just gonna pop the lid a little and leave it here. Um, and then I'll watch the level because I don't want it to overflow either. But So you wanna start with the brake caliper furthest away from the master cylinder. I'm gonna start with the right rear, then I'm gonna do the left rear, I'm going to do the right front and the left front. So I'm basically pushing all that fluid out to the, through the reservoir from the back to the front. Okay, just real quick, I'm going to show you where this jack goes. If you look into the front, there's a little, there's two little dips here. You want to put it in between those two dips. Right there is the lift point. And once you lift the front up, where you got the back wheel off, you just take a jack here. Ah. And you're gonna have a very similar spot towards the back between those. Just put your jack right in there. And I'll just lower this just enough to where weight is on both the jack and the stand. Okay, little tip on these air ratchets is when you've got a vehicle with a locking lug nut, don't use the air ratchet on the lock. If you strip that, then you'll never get it loose. Okay, what in the world is this? Some type of rubber piece. Quick tip, uh, use some paper towels or newspaper to catch the brake debris that comes down because when you start taking all this apart, especially this hub, stuff's gonna start falling and I just don't want that on the garage floor, so I should put some stuff down to catch it. Okay, so you've got a 14 on the top here and a 14 down here. That's the first two you're gonna take off. Then we've got these 18s just behind it. Okay, these look the same, top and bottom. Okay, once that's off, this will just come right out. You can see this piston's pretty extended here. So, set this aside. This is just gonna slide out like this. See all the brake debris coming out now? And you can pretty much see there, these are done. So 120,000 miles, and we still got a little bit of pad left too, which is interesting. Okay, it's definitely a 17, not an 18 back here. So let's see, since I don't, I can't use my air racket, let's see if this, that's not too, not too bad actually. Okay, so then this just comes right off. 
and top and bottom bolts look the same. I mean, you can see it's pretty, pretty much fused on there. So I got some WD-40 here, and I squirted it inside of these holes here where the screws are. And also, I found a little bolt that I could turn in here, and it actually is working. Uh, it's pushing the it's pushing the thing off now. working but now I'm out of thread so I'm going to back it back out but I'll just show you what this looks like here it's kind of a homemade thing uh, I just happened to find something that had the threads but I basically made a homemade little bolt um, and just found some threads that matched it's interesting these Stainless, but with a special rubber backing. That's got to be a, a Lexus thing for sure. These are so high quality. I mean, so when you put these clips on, they just fit in the middle here. There's a little indentation. That little middle part is going to go inside that little hole, little dent looking thing. Just like that snaps in so it only came with clips that go on the brakes which means that the clips that are inside of the calipers are going to stay there those aren't being replaced so first of all i'm going to take these slide pins out well it's a little dry it's not too bad now when you put this grease on you don't need much it's not like you're Grease in a bearing or anything. Okay, we'll just slide this back in here. Oh yeah, it's definitely much, much slidier. If that's a word. Now I just need to get this boot back over here. There we go. That's in there. Yeah, these just need to be able to slide in and out. Let's do this one now. Ooh, this one is almost locked up. Ugh. Wow, that is super dry. I mean, I would say that was like almost seized up. If it was up to me, I'd say it was pretty much seized up. Again, you don't need much. Oh yeah, much better. Let's just get this boot back over it. There we go. Okay, I went in and took that little rubber piece off the other. I really don't know what this is for, but my guess is it's for like some type of adjustment. I like to torque things to spec, so I'm gonna set this this up to 80 foot pounds so 80 foot pounds for these back bolts here and uh, that will help me to feel better see here that the piston is pushed out so we got to push that piston back in and also I want to put a little bit of grease around this piston here so one thing I'll note um, I put I put grease in the middle of both but notice the contact points are on the sides here so I'm probably just gonna smear a little grease on the sides where the contact points are because really I was only concerned about you know where it touched let's just try pushing it like this 
Yeah, it's going back. There we go. Yeah, we got it back. And put a little bit around this ring here. Push these slide pins in a little. Ah, get my glove stuck in there. Let's adjust this out to 25, 25-ish. Okay, good. Oh. So just finished with the first wheel, one out of four. It's just a really humid, hot day. It's probably in the 90s, but the humidity is high. So just gotta stay hydrated, pretty sweaty. So the next wheels, you know, this one's pretty much rinse and repeat. Front's gonna be a little bit different just because it's much more heavy duty. Probably the most important part, especially when you're replacing the, the rotors, is to seat the pads to the rotors. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Be sure to stay tuned till the end. All right, so we finished both of the rear brakes and rotors, and now we're gonna get started on the front. We're gonna do this front right first. Just looking at the brake fluid level, it really didn't change much at all. It might've went up just a little bit. It's definitely gonna go up faster because I think there's more than one piston in the front brake, so that there's probably two pistons. Oh yeah, this is much heavier. Much heavier of a system. Look at how extended those pistons are. All right, it's important to be careful this, this hose here. You don't wanna 
pinch it. So I'm kind of just setting it here so that the, the hose is still good. These don't feel like they're sliding at all. So the system definitely needed some maintenance. All right, we've got our new rotor here. We've got our old caliper brakes. And we've got our new kit here, which also came with new springs. Let's just get those out. All right, so they gave us some, it's like the same kind of grease as before. We've got these same little clips as before. So it's pretty straightforward, I would say. So we're just gonna peel this back here. Brand new pads, look at the size of that, man. Just snaps on. It's almost like these are the real bricks. It's like those back ones are just there for show. <laughs> these are the real deal here. These things are like super heavy duty. Let's see how these pins come out. Oh man, it didn't even move. Oh, that is dry as a bone. It's what 120,000 miles gets you. Okay, that's how it's supposed to be right there. Oh, actually, this one's not as bad. Got that. I'm just gonna take some and dab it on these parts that slide here. Just real lightly, nothing, nothing big. Lightly spray around the hub here inside the screw holes so the front doesn't work with this let's see if this will oh I just banged it and it came off. How about that? It wasn't fused on there as much as the other one. There's a big ridge at the top here. You can see how much it's worn down the, the actual metal. For this side, I got some brake parts cleaner. And what I wanna do is just try to find a clean place here. And I'm just gonna clean the surface of this where the brakes are going to touch. See, there's obviously some oil on it. Yeah, look how dirty that is just from cleaning these rotors. All right, probably do it again after I get it on. All right, let's see if I can push this in like the others. Oh, no. I'm gonna have to do something different here. Okay, I've got these clamps here. Don't know if they're gonna work, but we'll try. Let's see if they will. Because at least they're big enough. So now we're just going to squeeze the two of these and see if it does it. Oh yeah, it's working. That's a, it's a lot of pressure though. So 
definitely a lot of pressure. Ah. It's going in slowly but surely. But it's working. All right, let's take these off. Oh yeah. Okay, a little tip here. If you put your, put just one lug nut in. Hold it in place so that's easier to get that bracket back on. My 17. Put this back to 75 to 80. Okay, now we take our springs. There we go. Again, I'm just gonna put some little bit of grease on each of these contact points. And uh, it doesn't take much. And then the rings here. Okay, now we'll just carefully take our caliper, bring it back around. I mean, this thing is heavy duty. So it's turning this nut. Let's see if I can fit this. There we go. Right, let's do the bottom. Ah, there we go. Whew. Good thing that's only 25 or that would be much harder. All right, so we've got everything back on here. I can loosen this. Okay, three down, one to go. Let's take a look at our reservoir and it definitely went up this time from max up to almost the the lid there. So we'll have to watch this next time. And uh, what I'll have to do is pull a little bit out to get us back to max probably. That is really tight. It's coming though. Slowly but surely. All right. So I've got a big bar now. Let's see if this will work. Oh yeah, that made it much easier. Ow. I need to 
just busted loose all of a sudden. This one is fused on. So I found this bolt. It the head of it is a 15, no, 13 millimeter. Basically, you just gotta match the threads. And you can see that goes right in. So now if I just turn this, should hear it pop. go that was a lot of rust <laughs> so that's the bolt that did it and this is not the front is not the same as the back I don't know why they didn't they did it that way but I've got all these tray fulls of just nuts and bolts I've saved over the years and so when I run into this situation all I have to do is just you know Try something. See, this is starting to rise again. So, let's just keep watching. to grip this thing, man. You gotta squeeze so hard. Okay, we're basically at the top now, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna soak up with a clean towel. This is a reminder. It's gonna dab a little bit on the points that touch the caliper. Okay. Really, you couldn't do that without a long bar like this because 80 pounds in a tight space is kind of, kind of hard, actually. I'm gonna make sure that both pads are flush up against the rotor there. Don't let them be crooked. Remember to push in these slide bolts to uh, get it on. All right, so we're on there. Calipers tight, get everything tight. Button it back up again. We finished all four wheels. Now I'm going to give you some tips for breaking in the brakes or setting the, the pads. Now, before we get started, go ahead and start the car and then, does it say no key? Okay, now uh, pump the brakes a little bit. Yeah, I suspect that this will go down a little bit. All right. pump the brakes a few times because those pistons have to go back yeah that's 
good. Those pistons have to go back out. And so by pushing those pistons out, it's gonna, it might use up a little bit of fluid, but we're right at the where we need to be, so we're good. So what you're basically gonna do is you're gonna, about five times, you're gonna go down a straightaway and you're gonna brake really hard and then you're gonna turn around and go down a straightaway and brake really hard and go do that five times and it'll heat up the brakes enough to where that then they'll seat and then you're good after that. If you don't do that, then you run the risk of warping your rotors if you don't seat them properly. So um, so that's what we're gonna do. First, I wanna make sure that our, that our emergency brake works. So I'm just gonna go a little bit and all right, good. So the emergency brake works. Next, turn off your AC through the manual. All right, because once you start revving the engine, uh, if the AC doesn't cut off, you build up a lot of pressure in the system, which could blow the clutch on the compressor. And that actually happened to me once. Uh, so anyway, here we go. So I was a little conservative on that one. I was as bad as I thought. <laughs> well, if I was, I don't want to like crash if the brakes don't work. All right. So the the goal here is just to get the, the brakes nice and hot. go out and make sure they're good and hot. Well, I can smell it. Oh yeah, they're blue, so that's good. It's a good sign. Yeah, they definitely feel hot. So, so we finished that, and now we're just gonna do some light braking, let the brakes kind of cool off a little bit. But, uh, we did what we needed to do and you could smell the sort of the, I don't know if it's oil or whatever, like whatever burning off. Um, you could definitely smell it, right Austin? Yeah. So, all right, that's it. You wanna get some gas? Sure. I would say overall, I'd give this a three out of five in terms of difficulty. You know, some of those bolts are hard to get off. They're about 80 foot pounds of torque and it's kind of, Kind of tight you know inside of there but uh, as long as you've got the right bars and the right torque wrench you'll be fine hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching